yesterday we had a meeting with some uh, delegates and we were arguing whether Malta or Cyprus is the sunniest. And I think Graz is the sunnier today. So um, that's really good news for people from the Mediterranean. Um, so today what we will be doing, we will be talking about crowd value. And these are two words that when you combine them, they have, they have a dynamic that is unparalleled to none. Um, and I do think that inventing new words is the bread and butter of this industry. Crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, crowd innovation are combinations of different words that have come together to, pro to produce new uh, dynamic content. Um, social entrepreneurship, which is the subject of my uh, speech today, is a very big part of the current equation. And while discussions on crowdfunding always entail numerous aspects, regulations, legislations, frameworks, due diligence, risk management, the very essence of the industry is how you will convince investors to fund your project or your idea. And I think that social entrepreneurship has, the, has understood the very core of the industry because it appeals to every citizen on things that matter for them. Um, so what are we going to be solving today? The social entrepreneurial ecosystem, if you like, is always uh, associated with impact investing. Uh, serial impact investors who are willing to invest consecutively in ideas that have a societal and or environmental uh, impact for the world we live in. The dilemma for me no longer exists. The impact versus profit dilemma uh, is not as strong as it used to be. And as, as I said before, we see that social enterprises are a very attractive asset class in itself for impact investors. On the other hand, uh, if we flip the equation on the other side, we will also have to solve the problem of the social entrepreneurs. And a social enterprise faces actually all the problems that are faced by a regular SME, plus the additional problems that are created by the very nature of the product or the cause it propagates. And uh, usually this comes to play uh, for the impact versus profit dilemma, which for the social entrepreneur is much more serious than for the investor. And the second problem that uh, research and academia and the literature has identified for social enterprises is the fact that having worked for so long in a very specific environment with a very uh, long history of how things are done in social enterprises, it's very hard to change uh, things on a daily basis in order to become customized for this new exciting world of crowd-related activity. And I absolutely agree with the speaker uh, before the last one, Mr. Tim Wright, that said that crowd activity is an ecosystem. It's not crowdfunding or crowdsourcing or crowd innovation. It's a generic concept that you shouldn't separate uh, in very niche categories. Otherwise, the risks are huge. Um, in trying to do a baseline assessment uh, from the demand and the supply side for social enterprises, we see that on the demand side, there is a lack of a legal definition for social enterprises. Uh, I come from Cyprus, and we recently had a round table with the government about initiating a new legal terminology for social entrepreneurship. And the European best practice that we came across throughout our research uh, was very vague and disparate. So uh, the lack of a very fixed terminology makes it very hard for social enterprises uh, to know what they're offering to impact investors. The confusion then between different concepts. Are you a social enterprise or are you a cooperative? Are you a nonprofit organization or are you something like a charity or are you a charity? There are so many different conflicting terminologies around that even for the entrepreneur themselves, it becomes very difficult to identify what they want to do. Um, and the third uh, issue that we have identified on the demand side is the fact that there is a huge reliance on public funds, which makes social entrepreneurship uh, not as attractive to some as uh, we, we would want to suggest. 
On the supply side, we see that there is a frustration on behalf of impact investors on the lack of preparedness uh, from social enterprises. They often find that social entrepreneurs, especially in the startup or in the very early stages, don't have a very clear idea of what they want to do. They want to do some good in society, they want to solve some environmental issues, but they might not know exactly what they want to do. And this lack of robust preparedness creates huge problems in trying to secure investment. So, if we go back to the things that matter, we'll see that social entrepreneurship actually, uh, it's a very, very famous concept and a very attractive asset uh, class in itself for specific groups of people. For example, um, I'm a woman, as you can see, so female investors have very specific ideas on where they want to put their money. They want to create projects that will break the glass ceiling, that will close the gender gap, uh, that will create better education systems, or that will achieve a work-life balance. On the, same, uh, on the same argument, millennials are interested in things that they care about. So they're more likely to invest in things they care about, and they're more likely to care about the things they invest in. So you've got a cyclical argument that actually creates a very intense argument for social entrepreneurship. The demand for sustainable investing is expected to increase, and the fact that social issues are now on the rise, we have seen that Europe has gone through a huge uh, crisis with the, with the whole situation, with the migration and the refugee crisis, uh, conflict-ridden zones, so we see that social goals, especially as provided by the UN and the Sustainable Development Goals, is something of our times, and it's something that we shouldn't put aside as a soft issue, not at all. So comes crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, I believe, is the ultimate social finance tool. Uh, and if you divide it into three very, very, very generic um, uh, industries, if you've got green crowdfunding, sustainable innovation, and humanitarian crowdfunding, that was something that we discussed uh, last year in Helsinki for Crowd Dialogue, uh, we'll see that crowdfunding has become mainstreamed in social entrepreneurship as a way to kickstart projects that uh, have a societal or environmental goal. And the reason why crowdfunding works for social entrepreneurship is because it appeals to the very core of each citizen and their interests. So you would be uh, funding an idea digitally online, you would be doing it because it creates an ambience and because it creates an experience. So the same way you would be attending the final of Champions League, for example, and you would, you would want to reproduce that experience, uh, social enterprises recreate that experience for each and every one of us for the things that matter. So, what we did in Cyprus, and uh, this is the first time that uh, I presented here in front of you today, we tried to create a tailor-made program, which I think it's a program that it's, you know, we haven't invented the wheel, not at all, but it is an investment readiness program, and it's a lot, a lot of the things that uh, have gone into this presentation em emerged from discussions I had yesterday with many of you of how to prepare a social enterprise in order to be ready for crowdfunding or for, or for any alternative finance mechanism. So, Imagine if you've got one investment readiness program, which acts like a support system for social enterprises in order to fine tune their business case and provide access to crowdfunding. This program or any program of this type would have three basic horizontal objectives. The first would be capacity building, and um, what uh, I realized from Crowd Dialogue in Graz is that there is a serious lack of raising awareness and of knowledge dissemination activities between member states, and this is why uh, the event is so great, because it is really um, a, a learning experience for everyone to understand what others are doing in their respective environments. The second horizontal objective of such programs or of the specific program would be to reinforce uh, PPs. So you would have the uh, private sector and the public sector closely working together to create projects that would have uh, a mutual beneficial good. 
Uh, and the third horizontal objective would be innovation. We're discussing crowd innovation today. So by eliminating the dilemma between profit and impact, you would be in a, in a position to actually create serious innovation and disrupt, disruptive projects. Uh, the program has five main stages. So uh, a social enterprise would go through all five of them in order to be able, or any enterprise, I want to stress that this can be customized for any type of tech or business or any industry-based, thematic-based uh, enterprise. So at the first stage, we have application and screening, um, which essentially would be the initial stage. Then you have initial assessment information gathering, investment readiness assessment. The fourth stage would guarantee a roadmap towards investment readiness, and at the end, monitoring and access to finance. How do you do all this? I will explain each uh, stage in a bit. Um, how do you do all this? How do you access social enterprises and how do you enable them to find the right people to guide them through crowdfunding or to crowdfunding as, as the end go, uh, go? Through one-stop shops. So setting up a national contact point, which is actually something else that emerged from this uh, conference, that there is a need for national contact points where people can go and understand what the crowd industry is all about. They would implement the program, they would disseminate and raise awareness, and they would also be able to have tangible and measurable results in order to note progress and the success of the program. So at the first stage, you would gather the pool of all interested enterprises, which will submit an application via this one-stop shop. On the second stage, you would be doing an initial assessment as the starting point of the actual process of becoming investment ready. And the aim would be to get to know the organization, their aims, and you could be doing that through questionnaires through or through interviews. The third stage would be to position the social enterprise on an investment readiness scale because the entrepreneurs that would be attending this program would not all be of the same level. So you would need to place them across an investment readiness scale and be able to propose bespoke and tailor-made solutions to suit them uh, in specific. And uh, that would come with an initial investment readiness report with key actions. On the fourth stage, you would be helping them implement the report mentioned before. So imagine you're in, in university and you go there in September and you receive your curricula and the professors tell you that if you read these books and you follow these classes, at the end of three years, you'll get a degree. So this is, it works very similar to higher institute education in many different ways. Um, and you would be able to set KPIs in place to monitor their progress on different areas, such as financial knowledge. We find that many social entrepreneurs have zero financial knowledge or basic accounting or um, other type of technical knowledge. You would be assessing them based on their business plan, on their business case, on their marketing, on their content. And I want to discuss content a bit. Um, you know, people don't buy products. People buy stories. And the very core of crowdfunding is storytelling. So the, it is very important to be able to produce good digital content in order to be able to move hearts and minds. And in the final stage, you would be facilitating them towards crowdfunding. You would be implementing the recommendations you provided in all the previous stages with them, and you would be giving out a closure report with a final uh, advice in order to be able to launch your campaign on the platforms. How do you do all this, and how are all the other players coming at hand? We have to involve social financial intermediaries into the equation. Ethical banks, uh, the public sector, and social finance institutes are very important uh, in achieving any type of uh, crowdfunding success for social enterprises. And ethical banking in particular for me is very important. I had an experience with an EU project with Banca Prosima in Italy, which uh, it's an ethical bank, and they go all for sustainable innovation and helping uh, clients that are social entrepreneurs. And this is where they come at hand in trying to change the perception of the suspicion that naturally people have towards the banking system as a whole. The, so crowd value at its very core would be to help social entrepreneurs 
opportunities for impact investors, involve the public sector, the, acad the academia, and the research society, and all for creating social environmental good. And the superior aim in, in all this, why, why are we saying all this, is to be able to involve the state into the institutionalization of crowdfunding, especially for social projects, it is vital that the, that the state is involved either at the local, at the municipal, or at the central government uh, stage. And uh, I want to close with a quote. Uh, you see this purple cow, and it's uh, by a book by Seth Godin, Transform Your Business by Being Remarkable. And because I think uh, you're all very remarkable in different ways, and in order to succeed in this industry, you need to be remarkable. Seth says, if you're driving down the road and you see a cow, you keep driving because you have seen cows before. Cows are invisible. Cows are boring. Who's going to stop and pull over and say, oh, look, a cow? Nobody. But if the cow was purple, you would notice it for a while. I mean, if all cows were purple, you would get bored with them too. The thing that's going to decide what gets talked about, what gets done, what gets changed, and what gets purchased it, it's, is it remarkable? And remarkable is a really cool word because we think it just means neat, but it also means worth making a remark about. And this is where social entrepreneurship comes in. Thank you.